Hi, my name's Cheese, and welcome to another Fossil Sweeper Progress Update video. If you haven't heard of the project before, you can find an overview here, but the TLDR is, it's like Minesweeper, but you get to dig up fossils, and you get to build skeletons out of the stuff you find. For the past month or so, I've given most of my attention towards miscellaneous bits and pieces of housekeeping aimed at facilitating future work and aligning things towards eventual experiences that I'd like players to have within the game. Peter has created yet another awesome music track for the dig phase, which we're using for the sandy desert dig biome. I've been working to streamline museum interaction a little. Previously you would walk up to a specimen and then pick it up to carry it across to another location. This was a bit of a holdover from when all museum interactions were presented as the player's avatar directly manipulating the space. If you've been watching these videos from the beginning, you may recall that I had initially experimented with allowing players to just walk up to and push walls in order to reshape their rooms. Since stepping back from that, a lot of other actions such as picking up and placing items in the museum have started to feel a lot less justifiable. Having to walk all the way across the room multiple times to relocate a bunch of specimens is a long way from exciting, and having the camera move as the player walks around while trying to place an item with precision gets in the way of doing just that. From the beginning, I had planned to have an edit mode as a separate thing from the wandering around the museum taking in prehistory mode. While implementing this, I figured I may as well just entirely decouple the player's location from doing edit type interactions with entities in the museum. It's still a bit rough, but already a lot more pleasant, I think. To help give the research phase a little more presence and atmosphere, I put together a quick background that suggests a small lab. My hope is to convey a space that's a little cramped, but equipped enough to do the kind of work that the research phase itself is implying. I'm conscious that this doesn't really reflect a lot of the real world spaces that paleontological research happens in, but my hope is to present a sort of idealised space that has the right kind of character for lab-based research. Peter also continued to refine the research phase music, adding in some additional layers including samples suggesting drills and rocks being chipped away at, I added some special casing for the research music so that it fades in more slowly and makes it resume from whatever timestamp it was last at the last time the research phase was visited. This all gives a sense of persistence and time slowly ticking forward at its own inexorable pace. Continuing in the spirit of the changes I'd done to the museum phase's interaction mechanics, I also separated out the return to map button from each phase's pause menu. My original UI designs included a lone back button in the top left corner of each phase, a much simpler and more streamlined approach than any of the placeholders I'd implemented. This small change makes the game as a whole feel a lot smoother and more natural to navigate. While doing that work, I refactored a bunch of my phase transition handling code to use Godot's signals rather than callbacks, which simplifies a few things ahead of adding more complexity back in to replace that when I expand them to handle nice GUI transitions and stuff. The circle of life or something. Over the coming months, I'm expecting to increasingly shift my focus toward expanding the game's content. To help make it easier to assess and keep track of that work, I've updated the in-game dev progress tracker to track progress towards targets for assets. This doesn't differentiate between placeholder and release ready content, but it does help the scope of the project to be a little more identifiable. While doing that work, I had to tweak how some placeholder content is defined and stored within the game, including avatar customization options, which in turn had impacts for the new game screen that now reflects a bit more of the kind of options that will be available in the full game. Knowing that I'll likely be bringing more testers on and inviting more people to take a peek at development builds, I've also been giving a little attention to interim onboarding, something I'd been neglecting for a little while. I've updated every phase's instructions to more clearly describe gameplay, and I've added a brief set of first run instructions that give players an overview of Fossil Sweeper's gameplay loops and makes phase specific instructions easier to find. A very big thank you to the supporters going by on screen at the moment. Their support has helped me eat while making this game, and I am so very appreciative. A huge thanks also to Screen Tasmania, who supported this project with a small grant. 
Anyway, that's about it for today. If you'd like to keep track of development or try the playable prototype, you can find some links in the description. And if you're super keen to try out what we talked about here today, and make early test builds available to my supporters on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and goodbye!